So what I wanted to talk to you today about was MITRE ATTACK and to give you a quick 15 minute overview of what MITRE ATTACK is. Now, we'll get into the, the ramifications, what it actually does in a minute, but MITRE ATTACK isn't something new. It's actually been around for about five years. Um, and it's really a way of describing tactics and techniques. We're going to be going into it a little more detail. It's really come to the fore in 2018 though, with a number of vendors offering support. There's a lot of press out there about MITRE. There's a lot of information about it. So before I start, I wanted to ask you, have you heard of the frequency illusion? Has anyone heard of that? It's one of our cognitive biases when we do threat intelligence or any sort of intelligence. And the simple description would be, if I buy a new car and suddenly see that same brand and that same model of car all over the place, that's a frequency illusion. And in MITRE ATTACK, the way, I, the way I look at this in terms of levels of comprehension is the same sort of thing. We start off with levels of comprehension of attack, people haven't heard it, they haven't come across it, even though it's quite old. All of a sudden, and after today's talk, what's probably gonna happen is you won't be able to get away from it. You're gonna be seeing it everywhere. Every article you read, everything on LinkedIn is gonna be talking about MITRE attack. So this is to give you that quick primer on what it is. And after that, we get to the stage of, I'm enlightened, a sort of slight MITRE nirvana. So really, what is it? MITRE itself is a US-based organization. They've been around since 1958. Um, they do lots of technology and federal work advising government on technology and engineering. And the main thing you'd probably know them for is they are the, the CVE naming authority. So they control the CVE system. If somebody reports a vulnerability, MITRE are the people that give it that CVE number. And they actually released ATT&T or ATT and CK at the end of 2013, so it's been around for a while. What is it? Stands for Adversary Tactics and Techniques and Common Knowledge. Bit of a mouthful there. A knowledge base of adversary tactics and techniques based on real world examples. And I simplify that down to who, what and how. So let's go for a simple example. If, if there's a spate of burglaries in my neighborhood, there are criminals out there. There are people trying to, trying to break in. That would be the who, there are criminal gangs. What are they doing would be one of their tactics. And a tactic might be they want to break into my house. Another tactic might be they want to break into my shed. They might want to steal my car. These would all be tactics. Under the techniques or the how, it's how they would launch that attack. So to break into my house, they might look under the doormat for the key. They might see if I've left a window open, they might break a window. If they wanted to break into my shed, they might sort of, you know, take a crowbar to the padlock. So the what is what they're trying to achieve, the techniques and the how is how they go about doing that. And that's similar to what happens within MITRE ATT&T. So there are a number of overlapping synergies with cyber threat intelligence. That's what we as Anomaly do and why we're interested in it. So MITRE can be used to detect categorize and document adversary behaviors. So think of that back to the burglar again. We can look at detecting, we can look at categorizing the types of attack, we can look at documenting them. The police are aware of what's going on in our neighborhood. Within MITRE ATT&T, there are three main matrices. And when I start talking about matrices and I show you one, this is normally why people get scared of it. It looks pretty complex. But there are three main matrices organized by technology domain. There's one for mobile, which covers mobile devices, handsets really. There's one for called pre-attack, which really involves stuff that happens before a cyber attack. Maybe enumerating a network, maybe doing some social engineering, maybe doing some open source threat intelligence research into the company I'm planning to attack. So these things happen actually before the attack is launched. And there's one called Enterprise, which covers Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. And that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. Within Enterprise, there are about 11 main tactics and 219 associated techniques. So this is where it starts to get scary. That's what it looks like, okay? But actually, it's pretty damn simple. 
Along the top, we've got a list of tactics. And I'll, I'll zoom in on one of those in a minute. And under each one of those tactics, we have a list of techniques associated with it. So if I was to take one of those, initial access, for example, and blow that up a little, here's what initial access consists of. If somebody is trying to gain access to my network, their initial access to it will be by one of these 10 techniques. And it's unlikely that you're going to think of an attack and come up with some completely different way that somebody will get in. Everything will fall under one of these. It drive-by compromise, spear phishing of some sort, trusted relationship, valid accounts. You could say something about, um, you know, what about social engineering? That's fine, that actually falls into a previous stage. Social engineering will be aiming at getting valid accounts, maybe. But the initial form of initial access will always be one of these 10. And if we go back, you can look at all of these. Lateral movement, exfiltration, command and control. I've got a number of different techniques, but virtually everything that happens will fall under one of those. So if we look at attack, and we compare it to something else you might be familiar with, Lockheed Martin's cyber kill chain. If you look at it, pre-attack, which I discussed previously, really covers the early stages of the kill chain, reconnaissance, weaponization, and delivery. And those are the associated sort of high-level tactics we have at that stage of the kill chain. Going on to the later parts of the kill chain, exploitation, installation, control, and actions and objective, this is where we have the enterprise part of the attack framework. So over there, we've got pre-attack. Over here, we've got enterprise. So here's a scenario for you. An attacker wants to target my organization and install crypto mining software onto machines and get that spread across my network. So there are a number of different steps that the attacker has to go through so let's have a look at those. He might want to gain access. And maybe in this case, he got access to the network initially through a spear phishing link. Once he's got access, the next step might be to escalate privileges. Maybe he wants to gather other credentials to enable him to spread out. Establish persistence. He wants to make sure that his piece of malware starts every time the machine is rebooted. Re rebooted. So he might add that to a scheduled task and then moving laterally with maybe past the hash or something like that. So he, he actually executed five steps, each with a specific state. Initial access, privilege escalation, credential access, persistence, lateral movement. And he used specific techniques under each one of those to accomplish the goal. So if we have a look at this, and again, this looks rather scary, but when you look at what we're doing here, it's quite simple. There's a number of links. This is to the, attack, the MITRE Attack Navigator. So what we've done is under initial access, we've put together the spear phishing link. Under the next one, execution, we've put together a scheduled task, process injection, credential dumping. So we've highlighted in this stage, in this navigator, the ways that the attacker is gaining access to our network. <coughs> The last one here is past the hash, and we've just right-clicked on it and said, right, give me some more information about past the hash. I don't know what that is. That takes us straight into MITRE's description of that technique, and very interestingly now there's a standard ID. Past the hash is actually technique 1075, and if we wanted to refer to past the hash, we could always just refer to it by that code number. And this gives us a description of what's going on there. So what can we do with attack? What sort of things would we use that Navigator framework for? There are two sort of things. We can look at attacks coming in, but we can use attack the, from the opposite side up. As defenders of a network, we can look at the security tools we have in place and say, right, let's map our defensive strengths against the whole tactics and techniques of attack and look for gaps and weaknesses there. It provides a common language for describing this malicious behavior. So we can now have a common, that technique number to use to describe between tools, incident response, and for threat intelligence. And we can develop better detections against certain techniques. You know, simulate adversaries, I'll show you this in a minute, and how can they be detected? 
So defensive controls. The sort of thing I would want to do here would be cataloging the defensive controls I have on my network. If I have a firewall installed, what techniques does that actually protect me against? And I can map those out on Attack Navigator. I have an XML proxy. What does that defend me against? If I enforce two-factor authentication, what does that defend me against? I can map these all out on Attack Navigator. I can overlay known attacks and see where the, there are weaknesses on my network. So I can align those controls to the techniques. For good measure, I can test, measure, and check for errors. You know, let me test techniques against the controls, measure their effectiveness, and check for configuration errors. So really, this just talks about some of the tools we can use for this. There are a number of great open source tools out there that almost do adversarial simulations. These are tools that I can fire off, typically used by red teams. Things like MITRE's own Caldera product, Endgame's RTA tool, Red Canary's Atomic Red. These are things that I can fire off as an attacker, as a red team member against my own network and start exploiting known techniques on my network. It can be done with internal red teams or ad hoc testing. So here's just a simple script, you know, I'm firing off a script and what I'm doing is running a number of command line objectives using net users to see if I can find any weaknesses in this Windows system. So the adversary simulation will look something like this. Let me start off by performing an adversarial simulation with the tools that I mentioned maybe, with a red team. And what I then want to do is start by hunting. So somebody has attacked my network. I know the red team has used these techniques against my network. I should have some sort of notification of that. There should be something in my SIM. If there isn't, I've got security tools which aren't doing their job properly. So I can start hunting through my security tools and look for evidence of this attack through logs and various tools. And once I've done that, add detection, note gaps in my defenses, and note the tools that are actually effective preventing these various techniques from happening. So if we talk the, the background of Anomaly, the company I'm at is Threat Intelligence, very strong synergies between attack and threat intelligence. We can do things like start matching techniques, tactics and techniques against SOC and incident response observations. We can use them to describe adversary malware behaviors. And we can do things like use tactics and techniques in reports, when we report up to management, when we deal with other people. Within our sort of threat intelligence tools, the various sort of things we do with attack are quite simple. We've added all the matrices to our existing libraries of tactics, techniques, and procedures. So if I'm investigating an attack, I can now pull down the specific MITRE attack technique codes and add those to the investigation. Um, within our threat hunting platform, I've mapped all the sort of techniques that known threat actors use against threat actor profiles. And I'm actually extending that out to defensive controls. This is where I map my defensive controls against my sort of attack and I look at weaknesses there. And finally, we have um, free weekly threat briefings we email out. And all of these these days, don't worry about reading through all of this. The only bit I want to highlight is we now include all of the MITRE attack links at the bottom. So we're discussing something that happens. Here's a new ransomware attack. Oh, and by the way, here's everything at the bottom that that, that attack is trying to exploit. Within Anomaly Enterprise, this is just a screenshot again, and this is actually APT28. Just as mapping the types of techniques under each tactic that are known to be used by that threat actor group. So in conclusion, you know, attacks come of age. If it's something that you haven't heard of, you will be hearing a lot more about it now, partly to do with that frequency illusion thing. Organizations are incorporating it, vendors are adding it to their tools very, very quickly. In the last couple of days, I've seen blog posts from ourselves, from CrowdStrike, from Digital Shadows, from a number of other vendors, all focused on attack. It really shifts the perception from tactical indicators. Instead of looking for an IP address or a bad domain, we actually start going up the threat intelligence stack. 
Let's look for tactics instead of those raw tactical indicators. And it enables the security community to describe techniques using a common language. So what would I say to you? You know, have a look at it. It's not actually as scary as it might look at its first, as, as you first think. Start using it. If you do, share your observed attack behaviors, either via blog posts of your own, via information sharing communities, or other communities, security communities you, you belong to. And encourage your vendors to add support for attack where necessary. Just a couple of um, references for you. Um, the MITRE attack site itself, uh, our Anomalies Weekly Threat Briefing, and a really good blog post that has been written by one of my colleagues, which this presentation has been based on, just been released there. Okay. Brilliant. So that's great. That's everything I wanted to cover today. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, we'll see you later on for the Snowden Talk. Okay. Hi.